Hi, this is Tom Muir from World Class Coaching with another in our series of animated drills. Now, this is a format that I used in the past when I talked about a passing by the numbers uh, exercise that I did in one of the previous animated drills. But I've adapted this same setup uh, and done some additions and, and done some changes uh, to use with my teams this winter. So basically we have the same setup to that one if you, if you saw that video. Um, the size of the area can vary, but the important factors are that it should be a rectangle. So it should be longer than it is wide to allow for the right angles to be played to these middle players. And here I've got a situation where we've got uh, the ball set up on two different corners of the exercise. So we have players in the right corner here and the upper left corner here with a ball at their feet. No one else has a ball. And so the passes go in a pattern to the middle player. And I'll just duplicate that line uh, here. And then they go out to the outside. And then that same pass occurs on this other side where it goes there and to the outside. And so what I did next is had the players simply dribble from their end into the line at the far end. And so then this player does the same thing at the opposite end where they're dribbling from here down to join the line at the back. And so they're basically two quick passes and a dribble. Each player follows their pass. So it's a fairly basic technical exercise. I like it. It's similar to triangle passing because you've got the same angles, but you add the addition of the dribbling to it. So it's a great warm up activity and it's very fast paced. So a player makes a pass and then from here and then follows their pass and joins that, that, uh, and basically arrives at that cone. When the player arrives at that cone, now you can coach as much or as little as you want here. I like to have the player uh, check to the cone and then check back toward the ball to receive the next pass from the next player. Then they open up, receive it, make the pass here, follow their pass. And they should arrive, arrive in time to then show for the player receiving the ball at this cone in order to open up and take their first touch in that direction. The, the key coaching points for me here, and one big one especially, is I want every pass to be in front of their teammate. So that's, that's something you have to really focus on with the players initially because they'll make a pass here and force this player to go backwards to receive it and then that slows the whole activity down because now they either have to take an extra touch or they have to get it across their body in order to make this next pass. But if that pass is across their body in front of them, they can easily then basically step right into their next pass. That's especially important here. I want this pass to be a little in front of the player so they receive it and can immediately take their first touch out of their feet and start to dribble. So just to make these lines really specific, that's in front, that passes in front, so they pick the ball up there, and then they carry on. So you can do this, obviously, in this direction. Then you switch and have the ball in the opposite corner, which you know here we're requiring the players to receive the ball on their right foot and go. When we switch it, now the player is required to receive it on their left foot, open up and go. So just changing the angle changes it, doesn't make it more confusing really or anything for the players. Just the addition of making sure that we're opening up and using the back foot on both sides. Obviously, when the player receives it here, they're receiving it on the left foot and then going forward. But you know that's for a dribble and this is for a pass. So I think doing it from both sides is helpful. So now the next thing I do is I add a gate to this and I'll just do that quickly here by adding a couple of cones. So um, what I want, instead of making this long pass, which you may have remembered from the previous activity, instead of making, you know, asking the players to make a long pass down there, I'll put a gate in here and we'll just differentiate the color here. We'll make that a yellow gate instead. And we'll make two of those. So we'll put one over here. And so now what I want is I want to have a player, and this is good too if you've got more players involved in the session, you can add basically an extra element here. So I have a player there, duplicate that player, and have them over here, turn them around to face that direction. Okay, so now we've got a player that's inside this gate. Now here you can coach as much or as little as you want. I like to be able to talk about this player checking into this gate. So perhaps I'll have them start on the outside and check in so that they receive the ball from this player. They're receiving a pass here at their feet. And then I want this turn 
to be, it depends on the type of turn I'm working on. If I'm letting the players kind of choose their own term, their own turn, then I won't really, uh, you know, force them to turn either inside or outside. But perhaps I want to do an outside of the foot turn. So I want the player to receive the ball here and then turn outside of the cones in order to, I'll just do a free hand line here, make it easier to receive the ball outside and then turn around in that direction before either dribbling to the end or passing to the end. Initially, I'll do the dribble just to keep the pattern going. As the players get more technically proficient, you can have this trigger the pass, but realize that if this slows down, it slows this pass down, and now everybody's waiting. Whereas if you just have the dribble, then each player has a ball on the line, and it's easy to keep that pattern going without a lot of interruption. But with higher level players, you definitely want to challenge them to be responsible uh, for that pass. We'll just turn this around here. Um, so that they actually this pass would be received here. So this player would be different because they would be turning and facing the other direction. So we'll throw a different player in there, a player with their back to the play. So we'll put them there too big and facing the wrong way. So we'll flip that around. So now this player receives the ball on a pass from here. And again, making that freehand turn, we'll have them receive it there and then turn to the outside of the cone and receive it there. Um, obviously, when they, they make that turn, we want that to be you know close to the cone. So maybe they make the turn to this side if they're close to this cone, or this side if they're close to there, so it's quick. And you know then we have them continue by finishing with a dribble. Now, there's you can do as much here or as little as you want. You could have this player set the ball back and then open up to the outside. So rather than turning, this player then passes back, sets the ball back to the player, and then opens up to the outside. So they're going to make a run from here out to here. And when they make that run, now they receive the pass back from the player who has supported their pass by making a run there. So we'll just add that run in. And then they receive a pass from here. So now they're you know, basically laying it off, opening up, receiving the ball back before they dribble to the end. That's just, you know, one other variation that you could put on that to create more movement and more complexity uh, in the activity. It's obviously many more that you could do. You could have them checking to the inside. You can have any number of different uh, combination plays that are off of that. You could have a player overlap to the outside, play it, play it back, and then check in. So th there's a lot you can do with this pattern, which is why I like using it with my teams this last week. It worked really well for different age groups, different uh, levels of complexity because you can keep it simple or you can make it more complex. So try that out with your team. I think you'll like uh, that different passing pattern.